It's been about five months since the last time I spoke to the chairperson of the insurance regulatory body, IRDAI. Five months? That seems like a short time frame. But well, that hasn't been the case for IRDAI. In the last five months, the insurance regulator has given us multiple opportunities to speak about some of the large developments in the insurance sector, and that has happened almost every alternate week. To speak about what has transpired so far and what is waiting to transpire, we are joined by the chairperson of the insurance regulatory body, Devashish Panda. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to CNBC TV 18. Thank you, thank you, Yash. Sir, I want to understand something from you since you've taken over. As the chairperson of the insurance regulatory body, you've sort of brought some big-sized reforms into the insurance sector, into the market, as far as proposals are concerned. What happens from here? Do you wait before you introduce more proposals and wait for them, these ones, to be executed? Or the draft papers will keep coming? The industry needs a lot still. See, Yash, the whole uh, idea behind uh whatever is churning is happening in the uh, regulatory space is primarily uh, the target is to how do we ensure our entire society. Correct. And uh, come 2047, we'll turn 100. And uh, so we should see a fully insured India before 2047. Now, what do you mean by fully insured? Here, I would believe adequate uh, coverage with uh, life, health, uh, a personal accident, property, and all enterprises sh should have, uh, you know, uh, cover for covering their business risks. Mm. So that is the prime target or vision, you may say. First and foremost is how do we create a regulatory framework which is supportive, facilitative, forward-looking, and progressive. It has to be in sync with the market needs and the trends not alone within the country, but worldwide. Second, as a reg that is the developmental role, if I wear the hat of uh, uh, the developmental uh, mandate. Of and the if I step into the regulator's shoes, then I need to have a robust risk management framework. Hmm. So these are two building blocks on which uh, we are trying to uh, you know, work on. The third major pillar is how do we provide a platform where investors, businesses find the necessary uh, comfort and convenience. So in other words, we may put it as ease of doing business. The whole idea again is how do we quickly close the protection gap. Hmm. So we need more investments into the sector. We need more number of players to come into this space. If I were to double the insurance uh, penetration today where it is, say it is 3.2 percent if we wish to double it in the next five to seven years, then we need a lot of capital. You've specified the limits of expenses of management for life insurance companies, for general insurance companies, standalone health insurance companies. Uh, what I want to understand from you, since it's a very important reform, uh, do you see this going in the next board meeting? Because the final date for consultation is before that. And by when do you see the EOM regulations actually taking shape and becoming effective? See, before I answer this question, uh, I think one point which I want to also tell you that happy to again inform that after a gap of five years, mm. uh, you know, 2017 was the last approval for a new uh, insurance company. Mm. And uh, after five years today, we have approved uh, an insurance company by the name of Shema, Shema General Insurance Company. So that's a matter of uh, great, uh, you know, pleasure. And uh, there's another one which is ready. Uh, we couldn't bring that proposal because their arrival of the capital will take another 15 days. It's in the pipeline. So that is called, that company is credit access. We hope uh, in the next uh, board that should also get cleared. And 18 more are in the pipeline. And there are a lot of inquiries regarding setting up of new units. Even what we have now done is to also increase the number of tie-ups as far as insurance intermediaries Correct. are concerned. Correct. Now, primarily I'm talking of the corporate agents and the insurance marketing firms. Now, currently, a uh, corporate agent could tie up with three uh, insurance companies in life, uh, general, and general and health, which means nine. Correct. But now we have allowed nine each. So, in other words, with 27, 27 different uh, you know 
insurance companies. Confident now that a fresh consultation paper is out, that you'll be able to take the final inputs in the next board meeting, and uh, by when do you see them turning into regulations? See, it should be now, see the first set of regulations which had come out, mm. again was based on uh, the inputs from the working groups, then a series of consultations happened. We received comments from uh, various quarters. We had meetings with uh, the stakeholders. And thereafter, a number of inputs uh, that came to us, we examined that mm. uh, in greater depth and uh, tried to figure out what should be the ideal uh, you know, uh, prescription. Of, I wouldn't call it prescription, the framework. Mm. A new formulation has been uh, broad, so that the original regulation has undergone a drastic change. Correct. If need be, we will definitely again uh, meet the stakeholders to address their mm. concerns if they mm. have any. Hopefully, I believe that this should uh, be, uh, you know, quite acceptable to everyone because everyone's interests are being taken care of. And if that happens, and, then uh, the so following it will board come. It will come in the normal course. Hmm. as and when the next board By meeting happens. Reduction of EOM each year for three years, right? How much do you see? Do you think 0.5% uh, should be given as a target to the industry I for reduction? I will not give any uh, view at this point of time. The draft is already there. But the draft let does not people, talk about the reduction. Let people come, let them comment. When we come to that stage, then we'll again come to back to you. What you've done is you've removed the sublimit, which was their segmental limit on commission. And you've said that the commission should be under the EOM limit. Now, one thought for the industry is that this will actually lead to a situation where large insurance companies spend aggressively in profitable businesses, leaving loss-making businesses for mid-size and smaller insurance companies. And that could pose a systemic risk to the industry. During the stakeholders' consultations, there was not much of an issue around this. But anyway, whatever fresh uh, uh, comments and inputs that we receive, we will examine that again. In the last two months, we've seen uh, a lot of GST investigation on insurance companies, almost I all general have, insurance companies. See, let, 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 me, let me interrupt you Just here. want to ask you, do you think EOM as a thing was misused by the industry so far in the I, past? I will not venture into that because I have not gone into those details. That is the GST matter, so the GST authorities would be able to tell you. Directly linked to EOM however, and the misuse However, there. however, the uh, uh, the IRDA is asking the insurance companies to submit the details of what is appearing in the media. Mm. So that is where it is. Okay. Uh, with the EOM regulations as soon as hopefully becoming regulations, do you think such instances of misuse will get eliminated out of the you system? You see, there will be a stipulation. If somebody wants still to misuse, then you know, then they are doing it at their risk and peril. Hmm. So if there is a regulation, it's, it, it says what are the boundaries. Correct. Within the boundary, you do whatever you want. Hmm. Makes sense. And the board, it's whatever you want, meaning the board has to take a decision. Decision. The board has to be ac accountable thereafter. With respect to uh, classification of promoters going all the way to 25% from earlier 10%. And with that increase, uh, the lock-in limit has also been relaxed, right, under 25%. Do you think uh, for the intention of bringing more capital somewhere, uh, we could lose stickiness in the capital, which means this could become more like an investment taking returns, exiting the company, uh, changing hands very frequently in insurance companies? No, see, it, it, the lock-in period also has been care very carefully thought through. It's mm. not that for a new company you come today and exit the next day. Mm. So there are pe defined uh, timelines in which they can exit uh, with the aging of the company. Mm. So if the company is say 10 year old, you know, then there is already financially stable. Stability. So there the lock-in period will be maybe limited to one year. Mm. So otherwise the minimum lock-in period will be five years for other companies. Now you've allowed uh, banks to tie up with nine life, nine general, nine standalone health insurance companies. Uh, the input somewhere that we've been getting is that this won't move the needle significantly, but what will would be if some of the large banks at least attempt the limit of three. Do you agree with that uh, uh, assumption? No, there is no decision. That's why we opened it up further, so that the policyholders get wider offerings, wider choices. Understood. So now we have opened it up. So it will be the market which will decide now. Hmm. So therefore, uh, the question of whether it will happen or not happen, it will be the question of time. Hmm. 
and automatically when they see value in it and having more offerings when people will go and ask what is your offering you'll say no i have only two or three or one and say you don't have a choice so why should i buy from you not a mandate but if an advice has to come from the regulator would you ask these large banks to at least go till three from one right now i am sure that they will all see reason in why it has been opened up during the stakeholders consultation mm. also uh, this came up and many of these corporate agents and insurance companies were they received this uh, idea very well mm. and so that's why it has now been amended in the regulation so as we go forward we'll see how it uh, unfolds are you hopeful uh, with the preparations that have been going on uh, by april we would be able see, to start no, operationalize bima no, no, sugam no, no. let let me be very clear that you see these are it's not that it's a small little platform that you create and start uh, you, we are talking of a financial market infrastructure and eventually the way it is being conceived and conceptualized it will become a systemically important Absolutely. one also so like the upi hmm. so for the insurance it is kind of a similar thing that is being contemplated hmm. so it will be a e marketplace it will sell it will service it will settle claims so entire product life cycle there is a service i mean the the the, the bima sugam takes care of correct customer convenience and onboarding by the agents and other intermediaries they are the maximum beneficiary of this uh, portal or this platform how now the ease for the agent is that individually they couldn't have invested in a platform platform now they can now it's a platform which is available where they have to pay nothing so the agent client relationship and the servicing will become much more stronger mm. much more faster much more transparent our attempt to reach out to the entire country then you know you you are there in every part of the country be it the northeast be it the hill areas be it the north south east west every nook and corner mm. today you see the number of internet users you see the number of mobile users mm. you see the penetration of uh, you know uh, what do you call digital penetration all across correct so uh, i think this will be a game, game changer game. as far as insurance is concerned a uh, very important question it's a e market place the intention somewhere is also to make insurance products more economical in terms of price as well because the commission also that on bima sugam no, will no, be there will no be significantly lower commission it is a question of the that is the overall commission structure what the uh, companies decide hmm. here it is the ease of buying a policy ease of servicing a policy ease of settlement of the policy ease of reach i really want some understanding here right now uh, a wide interpretation understanding is that the products will be cheaper on bima sugam as compared to other aggregators simply because the intention is not to make profit so the commissions charged on individual products no, will be no, much no, lower no no the, that is again for the companies to decide what uh, uh, the, what is their commission structure we have nothing to do with that if it is lower then the product price will be lower cheaper, if the commission right. structure so whatever is the i mean i don't know what you call lower it is for the companies now and the markets will correct. again decide uh, you've given use and file now why because you felt that the industry is mature enough to decide the right pricing to give out the right products there is only one segment today where pricing is still regulated by the regulator that is motor third party uh, if you think that the industry is mature enough uh, is it the right time to let the industry decide the pricing See, of motor is, third party it's not i have not mandated it is mandated through the statute hmm. uh, and therefore uh, there's a responsibility of uh, the government also uh, that uh, in case of an accident a person who is on the road hmm. uh, gets killed hmm. then who pays for it Hmm. so to the state's obligation at times is you know fulfilled by mandating certain things correct so therefore maybe that those administered prices are there hmm. so uh, that the concerned ministry in the government uh, should uh, will address uh, with your uh, recommendation what would that be no recommendation as and when they ask we will uh, decide i mean they consult in terms of the pricing we do send the it's not that the pricing is done uh, in a irrational manner it is done on a uh, based on some statistics data mm. and uh, you work out what what should be the premiums based on that the premiums are fixed correct okay uh, one important topic which 
will maybe go a long way in terms of increasing penetration is allowing more players in the health insurance space, life insurance companies and that particular thing may not require a change in the statute. Uh, how far, how close are we in terms of, you know, uh, putting up a solid committee in terms of taking uh, uh, suggestions how sh this should be done and putting out a consultation paper on allowing life insurance companies on the health insurance side, indemnity health insurance side. We will see, I mean, as we go along, we, I mean, the first things first. Mm. So it, it doesn't uh, stop anybody from setting up a, a health company. Correct. So therefore, uh, that's not a showstopper. Mm. So, but uh, having a composite license is something different as we go along, we'll see. May, that may entail an uh, amendment in the statute. No, also. composite license will. Yeah. But only allowing life into health even, won't. Even allowing life also, we will see. Uh, we, uh, now also they are doing the benefit-based. Uh, benefit-based, uh, not so, indemnity still. So, I mean, let's let them see. Now the question is in a uh, economy which is, uh, you know, we are moving towards a developed economy. There are, as I said, the protection gap has to be fulfilled. Mm. So the life insurance companies should, are focusing more on the life side. Correct. There are standalone health who are focusing on uh, only on health. But going forward, we will see as the scenario changes. So at this point of time, our focus is primarily Nothing on creating. So, I mean, as I said, going forward, everything is possible. So we look at it at the appropriate time. Well, on that note, we'll take a short break. But don't go anywhere because there's a lot more coming up on the other side. Now speaking about composite license, allowing both sides uh, to operate into each other's territory. Uh, the hope is that in the winter session of the parliament, a composite license is something which could be discussed. Uh, I cannot answer that question. I because the recommendation has gone yeah, from the regulator. Gone. It's gone. Whatever recommendations have gone, they have certainly gone. I'm not... Uh, so we have sent sent a set of recommendations. Now the government to uh, consider them, them. So that's how it is. I don't know when and uh, okay. what time. You have recommended a, that a composite. We have license. recommended certain sets of recommendations. Yeah. Uh, if you could give us. I I wouldn't really recall each and every detail but right now. Headline. But uh, the headline is about you know lowering of the capital, hmm. so that smaller players could come. Value-added services, hmm. on one-time registration. On composite? I clearly don't remember. Probably, uh, yes, probably, yes. But uh, uh, these are three, four things that I remember has been sent. So, okay. uh, On the reinsurance part, uh, the order of preference has been proposed to be removed. Uh, what I want to understand from you is that the input which we get from the industry is that order is one thing, taxation is the other thing. On the foreign entity side, where they have the taxation on reinsurance, contracts is much lower as compared to India. Now, I understand it's not your direct uh, side of, uh, you know, administration. But have you been in talks with the ministry to look at the taxation uh, part so that more reinsurance can be retained that, in the country itself? So, let me tell you, our remit is to look at how to create capacity in the reinsurance market, mm. allow the forces of competition also to come in allow maximum retention of the premium within the country mm. and also we have our international financial services center mm. the gift city if that could also emerge as a global reinsurance hub okay. so we are working on those pillars and accordingly a draft regulation has been put up in public domain uh, today mm. for public comments so once those comments come then we will take this initiative forward okay uh, on the reinsurance side uh, as well, another thing which is obligatory premium, which today, last year was reduced from 5% to 4% going to GICR on every general insurance policy. GI companies, general insurance companies have asked you to remove this entire 4% in one go. Uh, April, I think next year is when the revision again happens. Uh, are you in favour? of having this understanding that GIC RE is mature enough, now it doesn't require that obligatory premium and it should be removed? See, there is a committee which the government appoints uh, every year hmm. uh, to recommend on this. So the government had appointed a committee. The committee has given its recommendations and we have sent the recommendations to the government endorsing the committee's recommendations and now it's the call of the government which is to decide. removal of the obligatory yeah payment. they have said that the obligatory uh, session should be reduced to zero on dematerialization of insurance policies again a very important step uh, putting all the policies in one place uh, helping insurance companies policyholders at the same time 
by when do you see this actually starting? Because in your draft paper, what you've said is that you will give one year for old policies to be put on the DMAT platform after the new policies have been started to, to be issued. But by when do new policies start to get issued in DMAT form? See, these are all works in progress in defining what will be the timelines. So as and when we decide that, we will let you know. A lot of insurance companies, including the largest life insurance company, LIC, has expressed the desire to the regulator as well to start its own repository, which will do dematerialization of insurance for the company and for other companies as well. I uh, haven't seen a proposal. It has not come to my table so far. So as and when it comes, we'll take a look what is their uh, proposal. Do you think this, this should be encouraged? I, I, I don't know what is the proposal. I haven't seen yet, so how can I comment? There are already four repositories. Hmm which are in works. The, the, so the whole idea is that the Bhima, through the Bhima Sugam going forward, all, uh, should, uh, all the policies which will be sold through that should go into the insurance repository. repository. And uh, once it goes to the repository, it's a, or to a DG locker as the customer wants. Correct. And so that the customer, as and when it is required for settlement of the claim, they are able to produce. So, and going forward if these policies are in the DMAT form still people can use it for you know raising a loan or pledging it for shares etc so yes but the timelines and all are yet to be uh, decided and finalized one final question and since i have you here with me talking to us just about a couple of months before the union budget uh, the insurance sector uh, looks up to the union budget for various amendments, changes that it sees from time to time. Uh, this time around for the union budget, uh, from the insurance regulator side, what have been some two to three key demands which you expect to come through the budget? We have not yet uh, uh, finalized and sent our comments, but in the past some comments have gone, they are being examined. Hmm. And uh, we are trying to get some more inputs from uh, you know, the other uh, stakeholders. So once that is done, we'll forward our uh, Thank you so much for your thank time. You, again, thank you, thank you very much, Yash. Thank you. Thank you.